Hello, hello, and welcome to the conversation. Welcome, welcome, welcome. I hope everyone is having a great day, a good morning, a good evening. However, you are tuning in to the conversation. I want to say welcome and hello. Hello to my conversation community. You know, you guys, it's always great to see you guys. And if you are tuning in for the very first time and you are not a part of the TC community, that's right. That's what I call them. They are the TC community, the conversation community. If you are not a part of the conversation community, you can definitely become a member of the community. How? Oh, I'm so glad you asked me. You can be a part of the community by three ways. Like it, share it, or make a comment. And during the conversation, we like to have conversation, not only with my guests, but definitely with the community that is chiming in. Let us know your thoughts. Let us know how you're feeling. You know, what are some questions that you have for my guests that you would like for them to answer? Because they would definitely answer any question that you have. So again, welcome, welcome, welcome. I'm so excited to see you guys. And as always, you know for a fact that I'm going to always bring you some guests who are going to be real, who are going to be relevant, and who are definitely going to be relatable. So, hey, without any further ado, let us get into our <laughs> guest. So, you know that this month we are talking about males and mental health on the conversation because it is such a big topic. It is something that we definitely don't talk about too much. It's almost like one of those things where it's like, mm, we just don't touch those topics. But we know that mental health not only affects, you know, one specific gender or one specific, you know, um, economic category. Hey, no, it affects everyone across the board. Everyone has mental health um, struggles. And so just to give some signs and some symptoms, again, you know, I like to keep my community definitely educated and aware, but definitely just some signs that you might see that a loved one is being affected or a loved one may be going through a hard time. Um, so the biggest ones that we tend to talk about a lot when it comes to mental health, we talk about anxiety, we talk about depression, there is um, PT, I mean, PTSD, post-traumatic stress disorder, um, also OCD, you know, multiple post personalities. And the list goes on. There is definitely a wide um, variety, wide array of different mental health. But if you see someone who may be sad, um, worrying, crying, they have withdrawn themselves from social gatherings and different things that you know that they normally would do. Maybe they're more irritated now than normal. Please, 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 I um, will encourage you to maybe have a conversation with them, you know, find out what's going on, maybe what's happening, because um, something could be affecting them and something could be impacting them. But I definitely encourage that when you have this conversation with them, that you approach them, that you come to them in a space, in a place where it's non-judgmental, and that you actually come to them with an open heart to hear what it is that they have to say. Um, because some things may be shocking for you to hear, or it might just be shocking because you see this person as such a strong figure and, you know, and not understanding, like, you know, they also have struggles that they go through. So definitely, like I said, again, you know, we'd always want to check in on our loved ones, check in on our friends and kind of just see how they're doing. But again, so that was just a little bit, you know, just to give some awareness about mental health, but ha ha. Without any further ado, I just want to introduce you to my two guests that I have on this evening. We have Pius Covenant and also we have Joseph. So welcome, welcome, welcome you guys to the conversation. Woo! Hi, hello. Hello, everyone. <laughs> yes, so awesome. So we're going to start with Pius. So Pius, give the TC community a little bit about yourself. So tell us something about you. All right. Um, I'm super excited to be here, first of all. Thank you, Andrew, for this opportunity to share a whole lot with this community. I really appreciate. So uh, without wasting much of our time, 
like uh, Andre said, my name is Paulius Covenant, and I am a content creation strategist. Yes, I was. Um, let me just say, this is my month. September is my month. Uh, my birth month, actually. So it's, it's a kind of a win-win for me. So when when you said when you said, <laughs> okay, we are going to be, uh, we're, you're going to be organize, organizing <laughs> uh, the mental health. Um, September for the meal. I was just super excited because it was happening September. I said, this is my month. So um, <laughs> so that is a very good one for me. So I I am a content creation strategist. So I, I went to the university. I studied chemistry in the university. And uh, I am the first child in my family where, where a whole lot of things is, uh, you know, you know what this a whole lot of things is on the firstborn, and it has been a very a big one for me. <laughs> so during during the course, during the course of my uh, my struggles, I have uh, I have I have attended a lot of schools, a lot of classes, and it has been an amazing one. Yes. Oh, awesome! 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 <laughs> Thank you so much for, you know, giving us a little bit about you, you know, so now we feel like we know Pius a little bit more. What about this TC community? Do we know him more? I, I think we <laughs> you know him more. So, Joseph, give us a little bit about yourself. Hello, everyone. Good evening. And um, my name is Joseph Adelike. I'm speaking from Nigeria, Lagos, to be precise. And um, I'm a filmmaker a writer and a personal development coach. I actually studied English at the University of Lagos, Nigeria. And um, I am the third child of my family. <laughs> the third boy, the third child. And I, I have, I've, I have my own share of life. And <laughs> so I, I guess that's why I'm here yeah, to, to um, to share what we've um, passed through and I've been able to overcome. And it, it's, it, I, I am very, very proud to be here to share my thoughts with uh, the world and for people to learn from it. I, I know that it's, it's, it is not easy. I, I am a kind of person that believes that the best book you can ever read is from someone else's experience. And that kind of that kind of book is is a kind of book that you <laughs> is, is a book that you can't really get anywhere. And once you hear that kind of testimony, you you it might resonate with you, and you would not want to fall victim of the same thing. So a, a friend of mine said, or a mentor said, um, the uh, if you are looking for a secret of success. Mm -hmm. you would have to go to the place they are talking about it so that when they talk about it, you are there listening. Mm -hmm. So you don't miss out. So if anyone is going through depression, going through mental health challenges, I believe this community is the best place to be. And if, um, if you can't afford a therapist, this place is where you hear people's story and you would have a change of mindset. I'm really proud to be here. And thank you very much, Andre, for giving me the opportunity to share the same platform with Paris Covenant. Thank you. Oh my God, look, y'all made me feel so special. Thank you. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that, was, that was very, very important. <laughs> oh my goodness. But you know what? But you, you are so right, though. And I do like how you said that if you, like with success, if you want to know success, you have to be with success and you yeah. have to be around success and get that experience. And the same thing yeah. with mental health. Like if you are struggling with mental health, this is a good yeah. place for you to be. And like you say, if you can't get that professional help, you can come here and at least become more aware learn how to cope with your what you're dealing with, learn how to manage with what you're dealing with, you know, just yeah. so you can be able to kind of just get along um, and maneuver in your day by day. So, yes, thank you. Yeah. But I want to thank you guys also for just being guests 
on the <laughs> community. So I'm, and, you know what? and you guys, we have to shout out Miss Perlette, you know, for Ms. the Perlet Yes, Miss Perlette. Yes, Miss Perlette. Thank you. Thank you very much. I, I, I forgot you, to Ms. mention Perlet. that. I wanted to say that because um she she mentioned your name and I was like, okay, this is a great opportunity for me. And I really, really appreciate that. I thought she's, she has done a lot for me. She's actually been a very, very productive person in my growth. And I'm really, really grateful for that. Oh, awesome. Awesome. She's, what were you about to so say, Paya? Like a mentor to me, yes. She's so much like a mentor to me, like a mother. Like a lot of strategies that I've implemented in my business right now, she she orchestrated everything. So I really oh, wow. appreciate that. Yeah. <laughs> She, she, oh my she's goodness. A blessing, right? <laughs> she's a blessing, a real blessing, actually. A real blessing. Uh uh, Miss Perlet, if you listening, that means you hold it back. You hold it back, girl. Call me. <laughs> but yeah, we, we do want to thank her for the connection because, again, you know, I'm pretty sure somebody's watching this like, wait a minute, like they're in what, Nigeria. And how yeah. is she way in the States? Like, how does she? But hey, <laughs> I, I have told people before, you know, my name is in places that I have not even yet um, tried it, have not even yet set foot in. And so I definitely give all thanks to the almighty God, you know, for even orchestrating all of this and putting it together. Because I know for a fact that if it was not for him, then and with and yeah. without the obedience, you know, with me being obedient to his word, to his calling, saying, you know, hey, create this platform, and that's what I did, and I, I'm, I'm so grateful and I'm so thankful. So thank God. <laughs> yes, thank you, Lord. <laughs> <laughs> but okay, so, um. Let's just get in. Let's get into our conversation, guys. So, um, okay. who, uh, Pius or Joseph? Who want to go first? But I guess I'll go with you, Pius. Like I said, since you're on this side of me, um, Pius, tell us if you have yourself experienced any challenges with mental health, or if you have seen someone else maybe have challenges and struggles with mental health. Okay. All right, um, I'm going to use myself as an example. I have I had a lot of challenges and uh, even from when I was growing up, it so much mm -hmm. affected me that I had to lose a whole lot of things. Now, mm -hmm. I remember when I was much, much younger, one of, one of the major problems I had was I stutter a lot. And I know people who really stutter and when they have conversation, they don't share anything with anybody. They feel when they mm. share things with your friends, with your neighbors, people are gonna laugh at them, right? Mm -hmm. So I, 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 I stuttered so much that even when I was given an opportunity to speak, that was my first speaking engagement. So oh, I think we lost him. So he was saying, um, I remember he said he was saying that he used to stutter. He and stutter. That, yes. Yeah. And that um, was his first speaking engagement. And speaking engagement. That, that people would, you know, he felt like he was going to be judged. Mm -hmm. And I'm pretty sure a lot of us can definitely, you know, attest to that of uh, feeling yeah. like, you know, being judged, feeling like someone is going to talk about us because we have something uh, that we, uh, like, we're, we're an issue or problem or something yes yes yeah, so right, yeah. Though, well we find we have an issue or a problem and i think that's the one thing why a lot of people don't really talk about um their mental health or even talk about the different insecurities that's that's the thing the different insecurities yeah. that we have because we don't want to be judged by other people at you all know? no no mm -hmm. not at all not at all I, I, I think my mine is totally different from me's. And um I hope you don't mind me sharing. Oh no, no, so, <laughs> all right. So um there is um once you're done with the university of a year in Nigeria, mm -hmm. you, there, there's a, a program that the government has set aside for graduates from the university and it's called the NYSC. <clears throat> mm -hmm. It's a compulsory service year where you have to travel. 
um, to a strange land, a place in the country where you've never been to. And um, it, it's like a project where um, the, the graduates are trying, they are, they are going through a period where they should serve the country. Let me just put it that way. Mm -hmm. I don't know if uh, so. They are meant to serve the country, and um, I went for my own service here, but I was not happy. I was not mm -hmm. happy about going to that place they wanted me to go to. I wanted to stay uh, in Lagos, Nigeria, and not that um, um, environment they want to put me into. And it was sad. Why? Because I I already started my business in uh, photography. And uh, I was already working on my studio. I've created a plan on how to um, make it successful and how to drag traffic of clients into the studio and all this kind of thing. And um, all of a sudden, I received my um, letter for the service. And I got a very, very far place to serve. And the, the distance uh, from... Where I live in Lagos to the destination of where I went to serve is more than 10 to 12 hours journey by car. And it was uh, creepy because I am this kind of person that I've never uh, traveled outside of Lagos before. I, really? I, I was born in Lagos. I grew up in Lagos. I schooled in Lagos. <laughs> all, so all my experience, all my life in work has been in Lagos. And one of the reasons why many people love Lagos a lot is because it's more like um, the mega city of mm. the country. So um, even if when you're traveling down from Europe, then mm. yeah, or anywhere around the world down to mm. Nigeria, you most likely have to come to Lagos first before any other mm. place. Yeah, that's how the journey is. So it's more like, so I, I really do not uh, envision seeing myself going outside, the con uh, going to a far place aside from Lagos. But when I got there, it was more like my dreams, hope, aspiration, plans, everything that I wanted to do got tarnished. Wow. And um, I was quite sad. And um, the the tr the language that has been spoken in this country is more than more than a hundred different languages. More than a hundred different languages. Seven hundred languages. Right? Yes, yeah, really? like seven hundred. Yes. So, um, and this place that I was posted to serve, I can't speak the language. Mm. and <laughs> I can't speak their language, so it became terrible for me because I could not speak for speak to them, that they wouldn't understand me, mm -hmm. and the, the general language that was English, that I can communicate with you and you can understand, they, they really can't. Even, uh, even a small child of um, three, four, five that is already speaking can't even speak English. And the child will speak the native language and I become very confused on what to say. So it was more like me in a desert area, nobody oh. to talk to. Yeah, so because I can't speak for them to respond and I understand. Yeah. And I, I think um, one of the way people can um, feel alive for me, I feel communication does that. And yes. yeah, so when you speak and the other person respond, you feel a little bit um, calm and okay. Um, I remember when you were introducing, you were saying um, that um, if you know that you have a problem, get someone to speak to. Mm -hmm. Because you actually need someone to speak to. Communication is the key. And that's why this platform is there to communicate to have a conversation because there's a whole lot that talking can do. There's a mm -hmm. whole lot that talking can do. The, the talking is the problem mm -hmm. to an extent, to an extent. Yeah. It might not ease all the problem, but to an extent it does it. And yeah. I could not communicate to anybody. I was alone. I was speaking to myself and I was speaking and responding to myself. And yeah. I 
fell into depression. So yeah, I, I said, sometimes that's not good either when you're no. constantly just um, running with your own thoughts because you yeah. don't have any, right. <laughs> Because you you, Thank you don't you. have that 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 conversation like you were saying that conversation that yes. with somebody else who 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 sees differently whose perspective is differently because if you're just like in solitary with your own thoughts and your own mind not, yeah it can no. be creepy oh yeah. no no, no. <laughs> yeah. trust me yeah. it's a scream, very odd it's just very very odd I was I was alone. I couldn't speak to anybody, and I was normally I'm a slim person, but I was becoming thinner. Mm. Not that I was not eating; I was eating, but I was becoming thinner and slimmer. I'm glad you said that because that is actually one of the signs with mental health. Like when yeah. we do when we speak to our clients in this assessment, and we're like, "Are you eating?" But yet you're still losing weight. And yeah. are you mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and are you was, not eating <laughs> but then gaining weight? Because it can happen. And I'm so glad like yes. you said that because we actually yeah. yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. I think it, <laughs> yes. I, <laughs> so I I I was eating, but I was losing weight and I was becoming slimmer and it, it took a while. It took a long time mm. for me to realize that, okay, I think I should stop this. Yeah. I think I should just go outside and find a way. And um, if it's to, I started um, picking words from the language to communicate. Then I was learning the, the native language little by little so that I can mm. speak to somebody because I needed to share my thoughts with somebody. So I started yeah. learning, started learning, started learning, started learning. I, I, I didn't become perfect in a year, but I was able to find someone to, um, I, find, I found people actually, I made a family there. I created a family there. I was able to communicate with people. And I, I think it, it, it created a different mindset for me. Right. And I, I, I had to assemble that. What I learned in my, in my service year in a book, mm -hmm. And mm. I, I couldn't help but um, publish the book so that people can actually learn from my journey down yeah. to that place. So that because there's a whole lot, there's a whole lot, like I said at the, at the beginning, there's a mm. whole lot to learn from people's experience. And, and um, there's a don't, whole don't lot to learn from people's don't No, I trust me. I, I think uh, when you've gone through a, 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 a period in your life, you would actually want to share it. Trust me, yeah. you would actually want to share it. And um, I'm happy that I'm here. I'm happy that I'm here. You're, Paris, you're right. you were saying something the other time about you stuttering. Yeah, sorry. I I had the I had a kind of interruption with my network. That's yeah, fine. So I <laughs> so I, I will continue from where I I stopped. So I said I was stuttering, like I we I, you know when someone stutters, you can't be able to communicate. Like the way Joseph is talking about communication, when you communicate mm -hmm. with people, that is when people um get your message. So mm -hmm. I, I was given an opportunity to um, to present like to present on the stage. So immediately I start to stutter, and immediately mm -hmm. I start to stutter. A lot of people were trying to encourage me with uh, with their hands, but I know that deep down, covenant, you have messed up, right? Mm -hmm. And it, it made me it made me feel so down because I I knew that I will not be given an opportunity to speak anywhere. Right, because even even though they try to recommend me to any other person, they will say no, no, please don't give that person because they it will just mess up the whole thing. Mm -hmm. so it really it really made me to be in, like it made me enter into a room of depression, right? Mm -hmm. So I I really I really felt so bad. Thank God for my mother, right? My mother had to mm -hmm. come meet me and tell me that hello, covenant, you did well, right? You did. You did amazing well. 
So I had to pick up. She told me that practice it. Start saying the words bit by bit. Whether you are whether you are going to be saying the words thousands of times, just keep on saying it. So what I did was I, I was what I did was I would gather empty chairs, right? Empty chairs, and I would start speaking to them as if I'm speaking to thousands of people. Mm. Anything that looks like a microphone, <laughs> I'm going to hold you and start speaking. Oh my god! So I'll go back. And, so. I'm gonna go behind the house. You know, we have a we have a farmland there, so I I will just start speaking to the to the vegetables, to the to the grasses. I say I'm speaking to thousands of people. So that that gave me a kind of um, reinvention, right? So I got mm-hmm. to reinvent, and I came back on that field, and I started doing something amazing. Well, so that mm-hmm. so that was um, one part of my life that I I had to reinvent myself. So one thing was that I grew up in the northern part of Nigeria. Now Joseph said he grew up, he was born in Lagos, he was he was <laughs> in Lagos, Lagos. Thank God that he went to the east. Thank God that he went to the east to get another thing entirely. <laughs> so what what happened is that I grew up in the north, right? Like my yeah. primary school, my secondary school. Okay, over there you call it um, high school, right? So yes. I so I um, I had to I had to finish all that. My primary school, my secondary school in the northern part of Nigeria. So because I needed to start building influence, building authority around my field of interest, I had to move further. I had to come to Lagos. Right, you know, Lagos is a place where things are happening. So I had to come to Lagos. So I further my education. I went to the university where I had to study chemistry. Right. <laughs> so in the in the course of in the course of that, I I knew depression wanted to enter because I was still having a form of um, this. Is, you are the first child. A lot of responsibility mm. is on my head. Covenant, this is what you are supposed to have achieved. Why haven't you done this? Why have you, like a whole lot of my mates are doing extremely well. So I, I felt, oh, am I not uh, am, I, am I not that good enough? Or is it that life is just treating me this way? Do you understand? Mm. So it was more of a, a whole lot of things. So I started engaging in different things. That is what led me to social media. And when I started leveraging on social media, I started having a kind of sense of purpose. Now, I have a dream that Covenant, you are going to reach out to, to a whole lot of people. Now, you, you were speaking when you were much, much younger. Now, the social media has come like a bigger microphone, right, for you to now reach out to a whole lot of persons. So mm-hmm. I started leveraging on it, and it made me meet a whole lot of people. Now I am meeting Perlet Cassell, I'm meeting Andre. So it's a kind of connection <laughs> for me. So it is, I met Mr. Joseph also. Wow, he, his book is actually amazing. Down the East, yes. So it has <laughs> given me a sense of purpose and I am seeing that purpose coming to actualization. So it's a mm-hmm. big one for me. So, and that is why I got into, um, I got into the digital marketing firm where I had to, you know, I had to help purpose-driven individuals build authority and credibility around their field of interest because that is the problem I was having. I, I was not able to stand out. I was not because I was so much afraid of what people would say. How people because people were they were ready to laugh at anybody who can't speak, right? So mm. it's, so I just I just thank God for everything. Thank you, thank you, Paris. Thank you uh, for um, for the compliment on the book. Thank you, <laughs> thank you. All right. Um, I I remember an experience though. We, this is a, a male mental health um, part. Mm-hmm. There, there was a friend of mine, a female friend actually, and um, she had um, a challenge of. Um, when we all finished from the school, when we finished from school, she didn't have um, the, uh, what is it called? 
she couldn't get a job on time. And because she couldn't get a job on time, she was troubled. She got troubled at, at home by her parents. And I remember you, um, Covenant, talking about how the expectations from people get overwhelming sometimes. Yeah. And because people, people want you exactly. to... People want you to, um, they expect that, okay, you're the firstborn of the family. This is what you're supposed to do. You are supposed to cater for these, uh, your, your, your younger ones. You're supposed to start sending money back home. I, I hope people understand, people outside Nigeria, people over there would understand that in this part of the world, the trouble that is actually um, on the male child is quite... Um, enormous and it can be discouraging because the expectation is too much and can be overwhelming for the the first child um actually yeah. and i i i commend your efforts for for taking that position and <laughs> i think i'm lucky for for taking the third position <laughs> so i i guess i i'm lucky in my end but the pressure on this friend of mine got so so overwhelming for her and she had to um, commit a suicide. And people should understand that a whole lot of people are going through so much. People are going through so much. And if you don't understand that um, um, mental health is key to progress, mental health, if you have a stable mental health, you are going to have a stable, successful journey in life or when you're trying to move um, move past the challenge or whatever, if you are not mentally stable, it becomes so difficult. And um, I am really grateful for this platform that encourages people to, to create a kind of conversation. Do you understand? Create a kind of conversation for people to learn. Do you understand? For people to learn, I have yeah. seen so many things in this part of this world. I've seen so many things, seen so many things, yeah. and I am I'm just grateful that um, we have um, kind of grown to a point where we understand that yeah. mental disability exists. Do you understand? Yes. So uh, uh, I, I remember vividly what happened in the north, right? where uh, like uh where we had interreligion war where wow. the Muslims were fighting the christians like so every you were not allowed to stay in your houses so everybody were like refugee in the police barracks in the army barracks so whether you have a, a a house or you you have companies when that particular war starts right everybody will not be a owner of a particular thing so everybody will be depending on the government because the whole place is hmm. full of fire the whole place is full of guns so nobody hmm. so at that point people lost their lives people lost their i hope lives. you see i hope you see why i, I love that. lagos now <laughs> <laughs> you see you see you've been trying to get me to to <laughs> welcome back <laughs> Yeah, I'll come so back. That, that, <laughs> yeah, that point where the father, the husband, had to leave the wife. All right, please. All right, I, I, um, I think you, you I know, think you know, speaking you. out. We can't hear you. Oh, you know what? I'm sorry, guys. I forgot I had myself on mute right there. But no, I was saying I came back because you know Joseph. I saw how he was uh messing with you, Pius. I was like, no, he didn't. Gonna say you see that's why I like to be in logos, <laughs> and so that's why I jumped back yeah, in. Yeah, I was it's, like, it's, no, he didn't. Sitting there teasing and messing with um Pius. Let me come back on here. You messing with Pius? <laughs> yeah, Joseph, you. <laughs> 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 yeah. Yeah, but it's, no, it's, I was hearing um, I, when you was talking about um, everything that was going on, and I was like, "Wow!" Like wow, that really. Right? I hope you see why. 
I hope you see why I, I need to be born in Lagos, school in Lagos, live in Lagos, stay in Lagos and do my business in Lagos yeah, because I, I can't yeah, afford to go through that. that are good. That <laughs> things in the north are affordable, right? But things yeah. in Lagos are very expensive. See, that's the advantage, right? The advantage when you are in the northern part of Nigeria, you can be able to accommodate, you can, you can be able to afford a house, you can be able to mm -hmm. afford so many things around you. You live when you live does many things oh. like this, right? Like everything uh, okay. is moving like this. <laughs> Wait, is he about to debate Lagos and uh, and the North with me? That, oh, that's my thing. Uh, <laughs> don't, don't don't do that. Don't do. <laughs> don't do that. Wait, uh, I, I'm, yeah, are we yeah, supposed to true. compare expensive life with a death threat? Mm -hmm. Oh, wait a minute. No. Okay. Oh, oh, no, I, 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 I prefer, I prefer the expensive life to the death threat. <laughs> okay. So wait, wait a minute. So T C community, as you see now, first of all, T C community, I want you to know that these two are really, really good friends. They are really good friends. So you see the way they kind of joke with each other, which is like hilarious. It is so funny to me. But you know what? I do. I love it. Like I really love. I love y'all. Your your bond, your relationship with each other, um, and it's just so. It's just so funny, and it's just. I like it. I really like it. And thank you. <laughs> that you two bring. Um, thank you. To to the thank conversation, you. it's awesome. It's awesome. Yeah. But, but definitely, yes. Continue. Well, not continuing on comparing the the two different. <laughs> 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 but I do have a question. So, okay, with males and mental health, uh, we know that with men, you you are taught to be like the head of the house, the strong one. You know, not to cry, not to show any emotion. Did you ever feel this when you guys were going through your experiences? That okay, I'm a male. Um, and I can't show any emotion. I can't cry. I can't, I gotta, I gotta man up, you know, because I gotta be the provider, you know, of the home or, um, I think was it with you pious, you know, you were the first one, you know, the first one to go to school, the first born, like it was so much on your shoulders as being the first. Did you ever feel like it was just overwhelming too much and that you couldn't really express yourself? When you were going through those that experience as you know as being the first yeah it was it was so overwhelming i mm -hmm. uh, i left my i left my parents when i was 16 years old to stay oh, wow. with um one of their friends right so um i've been leaving them like it's getting to probably 12 years now that i've stayed with my parents right so I, I had to go do things that I was not supposed to do just mm -hmm. to make sure I, I, I meet the need of uh, my younger ones, right? So it was so overwhelming. I had to, I had to go work as a houseboy for, for some people, right? Mm -hmm. I work as a houseboy, like a housemaid, right? in order for, mm -hmm. for me to go to school, in order for me to finish my secondary school. So, because I, 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 had, to, I had to go through some, uh, I don't know what they call that, um, call it in your, in your play, um, Libra. I don't know what they call it. Joseph, can you help that one? <laughs> um, more, more like, so more like a missing. <laughs> Would it be like what, the high school? Like a missing. Like more like a missing. Like a, like a missing. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> exactly. yeah. That's the word. So I had to. I, I had to do serious, serious job. I had to work in the farm because my parents mm -hmm. were not there, and I had to feed. I had to help myself. I had to. So because nobody's there to take care of me. Nobody. Yeah. The only thing I, I I had no phone at that time. Right. I had no phone. The only thing is that my dad will will send a message to one of my uncles and aunt that hello um how is my son doing that was only yeah. the message so 
that's the only message. And when they get the message to me, I would just say, okay, uh, do, or they tell them that your son is doing fine. Either continue to do things that they, my parents were not even aware of it. So when I went mm. back, I, when I like I was, I went back to stay a week or two. I had to tell them that this is what your son has been passing through. So being the firstborn, I've been the um, firstborn has been very overwhelming because a lot of responsibilities are, uh, are just choked up, right? I just choked up, and you want to make sure you meet the needs of your family because yeah. there, there's this kind of uh, when when you there's this thing in Africa, right? That the firstborn must take care of the family, or else mm. you are not responsible. Right. If if yeah. you don't do that, if you don't take care of your parents at some certain age, or you don't um, take good care of your younger ones, there's um you're, you're not really a man, like no man. Mm. So all these things are like a big one for me that I had to manage. Sometimes I had to I had to do things that were not really um were not really good for my health. Right. In order yeah. for me to just meet up with the expectation yeah 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 definitely um joseph for you i know you are you're the third but what yeah. type of expectations did you have you know again like you know being a male because you say you're the third of the male yeah. right yeah and so again you know not being able to have that that space to you know uh, express your emotions cry you know, um, trying to hold it all in. I know you said you had to go into the service. And so for you, how was it trying okay, to yeah. express your emotions and your feelings of being a male? Okay. Um, I I think one of, one of the problems I had then while I was going through that period, I, I kept to myself, which was the major part. And Nobody knew what I was going through because I usually smile a lot and I kept the happy face and I was born in inside. I was ready to solve all the people's problem while mine was eating me up inside and it, it was becoming so... Uh, so it's troubling, actually. So it's troubling. And I, I, I realized that the expectations for men is quite high, that um, you're not expected to cry. It's like men shouldn't cry. Well, um, and um, several other occasions have come up where you just try to man up, try to be the man. Uh, well, sincerely, when I get to my closet, mm. I cry. So I, I, I just feel, uh, and, I, and I tell people that whenever you see people crying, just let them cry. Yeah. I think they just need to ease themselves off the pain. Mm. So don't, 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 don't stress it. I, I can be so hard on myself and not wanting to cry, but, but I, I feel that the moment I, I start, I feel less burdened. I feel less burdened. I feel less oh, burdened then. Yeah. And, and, and um, though you might be, uh, I might try to be manly enough and not cry in front of a lady. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, but, but I, I think it's important. It's important for people to know that um, when you're going through pain, when you're going through anxiety, when you're going through, mm. when you're going through, through things that um, become so difficult, please yeah. be expressive. And if the way you can be expressive is through tears, please just cry. And uh, just forget about the old story about men don't cry. Please, men cry. And yeah. cry. <laughs> please. <laughs> Please just just cry. Be expressive. Just yeah. Just yes. Just cry because um, there's a whole lot about being expressive will do for you. Yeah. Oh wow. Yeah. 
that you know what that was just so it was so profound what you just said just as far as just cry just like, cry just cry <laughs> please and, and you know and the thing about it is it's, it it sounds so simple of just cry yeah but what's that to do yeah but at the same time you know it's so hard for male yeah, it's hard. Yes, 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 so. yes 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 um, um, um what you think my of Sure, oh, what were you, saying, you said something. I said it's natural that it's hard for men to cry. Mm. Like it's hard. Like just <laughs> I don't know, probably because we, that that's the way we were created, right? Mm -hmm. I know I, I I'm not I'm not gonna agree with that. I'm not gonna agree with that's how we're created. I think um it's a society that, that actually created that. that. So yes, I, 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 I don't think um, there's a place in the Bible that said men should not cry. No, I don't think so. I don't think God actually made that commandment. I, I just believe that um, um, the society that we live in, that we live in, just believe that, okay, you're a man. You should, you should man up. There just we man go. Up. Yeah, that's what I was gonna say. And yeah. and you can't you can't always man up if you need to be sober. You can't always man up if you need to be sober. Um, I I lost my father recently, like um in June. Oh, I'm and sorry. Um, yeah, thank you. And um, I remember trying not to cry. Do you understand? But every time I remember how much is um, invested into my life. And I just feel, no, I, I've not returned that investment back to him. I cry because uh, that's what I cannot do again. It's gone. Mm -hmm. And you can't, I can't man up for that. What's, what's there to man up about? So I, I just feel that um, we'll, we'll find ourselves in that kind of situation. And uh, if you're trying to man up all the time, it's like you're bottling things up, bottling things up and bottling things up. And one devilish thing that that thing does for people is that you become aggressive. Ooh. And you be aggressive. Yeah, so you be aggressive to the wrong people and you be aggressive and, and, and you just, you don't know, but you just tend to shout on other people. And that's not your nature, but because you're bottling things up, you're bottling things up. And one day when you explode up that the thing is too much for you to handle, mm -hmm. you will cry and start reciting all the things you've bottled up so far. <laughs> <laughs> what do you say? You, you say you explode, you cry, and you just uh, yeah. kind of bottled yes. up. <laughs> Yes, you just release them, and, and that's when you you find people saying, I, "I told you the other time, I told you the other time," I, because you've been bottling up, you've been bottling up. So if you know that you're offended, please just tell the person that I've been, you have been you have offended me. Don't bottle it up, and don't become yeah. a man because of that. Please don't do that. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. So I I just feel that people should understand that that mm -hmm. um, men cry, yes, and don't be man all the time. Please. Yeah. Sometimes the man needs to be the woman and cry. Please just cry. Just express yourself and just yeah. let the water to pour your body. I'm not going to necessarily call her, uh, call her a woman. <laughs> but you know what? I think men do need that space to be vulnerable. I think they yeah. need that space to be vulnerable. They need that space to express their emotions. And like you said, and give them that, that space to cry like you know just cry if something is hurting you if you feel stressed out you feel overwhelmed yes you know, cry express your emotions express how you're feeling you know like i said what you're thinking what you're feeling you know express those emotions and i just want to say to the women who are who are watching in the tc community allow your men to have that space to to cry to be vulnerable Please. to express himself yeah because like you said um, we society has placed upon us where we're supposed to be, you know, well, not us, not me, y'all, just y'all. <laughs> uh, <laughs> society plays on you where you're supposed to be a man, you know, you got a man up, don't cry. Like, what you crying for? Like, you know, if you bump your really? head, 
yes, like, you know, get up, <laughs> man up. Like, you got to be a man and, and not cry, you know. It's almost like you shouldn't even bump your head. Like, don't bump your head, please. But that's exactly what it is. And I remember someone telling me, like, men are taught to, to kill their feelings. Like, you are not supposed to even have feelings. Like, you're supposed to be so totally strong. wrong. Yes. And it is. It's totally know, what wrong. It, what it does is it continues the cycle. And then we have people that are aggressive. We have men who are, uh, we have domestic violence where they're, they're beating yeah. on their wives, their children, yeah. you know, because they have bottled it all up. Oh. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Pius, um, would you like to add anything to that? Yeah, I, I <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I, I would agree that when we have our own time, we, we should express ourselves, right? It's just, mm -hmm. We should just express ourselves. Like, the more we express ourselves, the more we clear a lot of um, things that have shook us up, right? Mm -hmm. So it's very important for us to really act really express ourselves, whatever feeling we have or mm -hmm. whatever we are feeling inside, to just express ourselves. So that's a yeah. very important one. It is. It is. Oh, my God. You know what, gentlemen, I just want to thank, <laughs> thank y'all so much. Like, y'all have definitely... Oh my God! Like y'all have no, come on thank here. You too. Yeah, right? <laughs> y'all have come on here and just shut thank down the conversation. Much, <laughs> Honestly, really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Uh, said, you know, just really, just thank you so much. Um, especially yeah. because of this topic. Um, sharing your experiences around this topic. You know, it takes a lot of courage to express like you know hey like me too like i've you know dealt with some mental health issues where you know i've had to overcome <laughs> where i've had to express myself you know pious where you talked about you know stuttering and having to overcome your stuttering you know because you didn't want people to judge you you know because you that is something that people would have judged you about and then that would have affected you impacted you and then Joseph, you know, just talking about, you know, having to go to the service, you know, and being by yourself because you wasn't able to communicate with the people that you are around. And it's just, it's just so much. And like I say, I just want to thank you guys so much again for taking out your time to come to yeah. the conversation. Because um, the time is, the time is like, like far apart. Yes. Like it's <laughs> yeah. It's like, it's like, it's like. It's like, it's like like the Red Sea apart. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. So I, I, I hope I, I hope people know that we are like five hours far yeah. apart. Yeah, so I was now, just about to say that. Like we're like oh five hours God. different. Hours. Now you're in the yeah. now you're in the afternoon and we are yet dark in the night. Like a little bit spooky. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I'm over here with all bright light, you know, and y'all. Oh, right. <laughs> Look, you, you know, you guys can tell me what tomorrow is gonna bring. Like, what tomorrow look like, y'all? It's a, it's a good one. It's a good one. It's a one. good one. <laughs> Thank it's you. a good one. It's a good one. Look, y'all, Joseph tell us that tomorrow is going to be a good day. So it's maybe a good day. <laughs> but again, gonna be wonderful. Huh? what you say, Pius? I said tomorrow is going to be wonderful. Yes, it is. Yes, tomorrow is going to be wonderful. Again, you know, um, everyone, this month is males and mental health. You know, we are having um, men come on to the show telling us about um, their challenges with mental health. Um, maybe someone else they know, they have dealt with mental health and, you know, their ways of how they cope with it, how they got through it, and really just to bring awareness to help us. Again, just doing the things like, hey, just cry, you know, get it, get it yeah, off of you <laughs> instead of exploding, you know, like Joseph said, don't be aggressive. Like, you know, <laughs> get that stuff off of you um but we all deal with different types of pressures we all have 
things that we are dealing with and that we have to overcome. And so just little by little, we can definitely overcome it. And again, like I say to my women in the TC community, you know, we have to be here to help support our men and then support. I'm saying, you know, allow them to have that space to be vulnerable, allow them to have that space to just cry and allow them to still be men. Yeah. Because even if they do cry, they are still a man. They're still the head of the house. They're still strong individuals. They're still providers. And they're still someone that can love on you and take care of you. But sometimes they just need that space to just release and let some things go. And so that's where we allow them to have that time to be vulnerable and to cry. Yeah. Yeah. That's that's that that should be loud enough for people to hear. Yeah. I think uh, I need to increase the volume. Please <laughs> just <laughs> I just need to increase the volume on that and please just um just give um your man, mm -hmm. give your, your lover, your brother, your uncle, just know that they're human. They are human also and mm -hmm. human feels human feels pain. Yeah, and there is no one that um, cannot feel pain. That is no one. So if you can feel it as a lady, if you can feel it as a woman, just know that um, a man can feel pain also. Mm -hmm. And um, just um, understand that um, uh, that thing that can make you cry can make someone else cry. Yeah. And I, I think understanding does everything. And once you understand that, um, this man that I am living with, that has been um, providing for me, providing for the house, has been taking good care of me, mm -hmm. sometimes also need to be taken care of. Yes. And, um, so just the same way you feel you need something, the man also needs it. Sometimes he would have to go extra mile not to think of himself and think of you. And it doesn't mean that he doesn't want those things that he gets for you. It just means that he actually puts you as a priority. And um, sometimes uh, surprising those kind of people actually matters. Yeah. Because um, it's kind of bring the smile. And even if they are depressed, that they're down, and they're feeling uh, agitated or something, once they feel loved, when they feel um, the, the, the vibe that is coming from you that is good, I feel that the, the change would come. Yeah. And, and love conquers it. Love yeah. conquers it. So you yeah. should love uh, those people that you feel are going through that kind of period. That is the time that you need to attend to them the most yeah. and understand that even when they shout at you, it's because of the period, yeah. They are. Yeah, so. and and they still love you. They they, they still, still love you. you. Yeah, they still. They still love. They still do. They still. Yeah. Do. Thank you. Thank you yeah, very much. I, welcome, I I I, uh, I am very very happy that I I made it here. I'm very very happy that I made it thank here. Thank you so much, Joseph. Like I say, and thank you too, Pai. You know, you you too, both of you, for coming on the conversation and gracing us with your presence and your knowledge and your awareness. And again, just bringing normalcy um to mental health and letting people know that hey it's okay not to be okay and it's okay yeah to, to cry yes yeah. again um pious yeah. is there anything that you will any remarks that you would like to give to the tc community before we get ready and go yeah i really appreciate this community for giving giving us this opportunity because this this is something that uh we are given an opportunity to really express ourselves, right? To mm -hmm. share our our story with every one of you. So it's a great privilege, and I really appreciate you, Andre, for this opportunity. You are you are a person that the world needs to be reckoning with, right? So <laughs> we really appreciate it. Thank you, thank you, community. I really appreciate it. This is nice. Thank you again. Thank you guys so 